Hey Kenfolk, Brian here with Bearded X and this is my buddy Micah and we're gonna work on a tent frame. So a lot of hindrance uh, that a lot of LARPers come across is that they don't have decorum tenting. And now more than ever, it's become a lot easier. And uh, Micah just got a tent from Midwest Tents. Midwest Tents. Tents. Really Midwest excited Tents. about it, yeah. Right. And uh, it didn't cost him an arm and a leg, but buying the framing would have. It would have definitely shot the price up because they got to ship these really long pieces through the mail. And honestly, we can make it ourselves for a lot less. Like under $75, we can have the tents, the uh, the, the stakes, the poles, um, the, everything for less than, was it 75, 80 it was bucks? Like, it was like 70 bucks. Yeah, yeah, right. So it really doesn't cost much and it's fairly easy to do. And I think just about anybody can do this. So I'm gonna show you guys how, so let's get to work. Awesome. Okay, so the first step is you gotta go to the website and determine just exactly how long of the sidewall poles and the center pole and all that stuff is. Once you get your lengths, we can work from that. So, and uh, I went with uh, two by two furring strips. These are like, I don't know, I think six bucks a board. It shot up quite a bit since the pandemic because everybody and their dog is doing like renovations. You know? and or so, doing medieval tenfold frames. Right, right, right exactly. Yeah, all the kids are doing it. <laughs> um, so like, uh, we just have to cut them to length and we've already got our length, so they're six and a half feet long. Really easy. So, get you a tape measure. Oh no, six feet five inches, not six and a half. So, um, so that is seventy seven inches. Just do that, uh, how many times? Six more times. And uh, it's really easy, simple. Cut them all the length, and uh, then we'll move on to uh, putting the nails in them. And I'll show you how to do that. So whenever you're cutting these, just make sure that you uh, cut off the ends that you don't want. Obviously, this is not what we want, so let's cut that part out. And uh, the rest of it should be okay. So these old undesirables, you don't want to be cutting on a, a knot or anything like that. So yeah, let's cut this bad boy. All right, so now that we've got them all cut to length, we've got to drill a hole in the center of these and we want to keep it as straight as possible and at the center as possible. So you want to get your little speed square and uh, this little 45 here um, all the way at the end, right? Kind of square it up. Now you could just take a straight ruler and do this. Um, speed square I think are just a little bit faster in my opinion, which doesn't really mean much nowadays. Um, so that's roughly the center, and that'll get us close. Um, we don't want this this uh, this hole to go out the side or anything like that, split the wood. But I mean, again, these are like six bucks, so it's really not that expensive to just replace one. And it's not a bad idea; just to have extra, just in case. All right, can folk. So we've got our center marked, and now we have to. We're going to make a hole for this nail that's going to get driven in about that deep and uh, leave about an inch of this left. So it's about a quarter inch nail. And so I want to size just a hair under, just the one size under a quarter inch, just so there's enough friction in that hole to keep that nail in place. Now it's not going to have a whole lot of tension to pull out, but uh, still I like to keep it in place so that way you don't lose it. So uh, yeah, there we go. So I put this on a bench nice and level so it's easier for me to gauge, um, you know, look at the, the drill if I'm going off center in any way. So when you kind of brace it up against something, it's a little bit easier. Just now I gotta um, tap that bad boy in. Um, I like to brace it up against something, so I get this pushed up against my bench. 
so the bottom has something to butt up against and I have something to you know some sort of a uh, bracing to nail this uh, put this nail Is this gonna get? All right, kid folks. So we got our boards all nailed in. You know, with our little nails in there, and uh, we can use them as is. You might want to sand it down to get all the uh, splinters off of it. But you guys know me. I want to put a chamfer on it. I just want to do a little extra, be a little extra. He's an extra guy. All right, and uh, so uh, you know, I want this to blend in a little bit more than this uh, little two by two board. So uh, I'm going to use my router and we're going to put a little chamfer, a little 45 degree angle to cut this off. Now you could probably use a, uh, a raspy file and that would make it look pretty good too. So if you, know, you, if you don't have a router that would be able to put a chamfer on it or a shaper, uh, just a raspy file and a little bit of elbow grease, grease would go a long way to just dress this up and make it look nice and to help take off any kind of uh, splinters and whatnot. So, but we're going to use a router, so here we go. All right, so that's basically what we're doing there. We're trying to put a 45 on all these corners and it just, it just makes it look uh, just that much better. Um, it's not just such a square stick. It, um, I think it just, ma just makes it more decorum. But uh, yeah, one down, five more to go. Or six more, because it's center pole. So yeah, let's get done. Get it there, 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 there. All right, we got everything done, so let's put this tent up and uh, see if it actually worked. So first step is just get your tent out. <laughs> that seems simple. Just spread it out right where you want, where the door is facing, everything, before you even start driving in any tent space. All right, now the next step is to drive in where our tent stake's are gonna go. And uh, so some people do this a little differently. I do it this way, I think it's a lot easier. You can do this by yourself if you go with this method. Um, a lot of people like to put in their poles first. When one guy has to hold the pole, well, the other person just um, puts out the, uh, the tent stakes and the guide wires. Um, I, I don't think that's helpful at all. I think it'll shift on you and there's all sorts of weird stuff that happens. I think this is the best, me best method is where you put in your tent stakes first and then you put in your poles. So here we go. All right, so the next step would be to uh, find where you want to put your tent stakes. So see this seam here and this seam here? So we need to get a um, guide wire going this direction, go about two or three feet from this corner and that's where you're gonna put it. No, and again, you want to follow that seam two or three feet. Now you want to tie off your ropes to them. Right. So uh, this is these are six foot walls, and uh, we need about I don't know ten to twelve feet. So that's two arm breadths. So eat. Um, so I got a six foot span. There we go. So a knife or scissors. Yeah, you better step back. There we go. Okay, now that we have this one tied off, we're gonna tie it off to this. It's gonna get kind of tricky here, but So another little trick here is to do a slip knot. We're gonna do what they call a trucker's hitch. So like that. Because this will come undone. All you gotta do is just pull it and it comes out. And it's really just a bite. You do a little loop and you just grab it, pull it through that so it's real simple. And now you wanna go through that little eye like that. And then you do the same thing that same kind of slip knot for now just to keep the tension here so when we raise this up this isn't going to go anywhere it'll help provide some tension here uh, we're going to put this 
in the center and all of these lines that we just drove uh, drove in are going to keep this thing from toppling over so that's your job okay you to do this so okay. jump on in there get in the hole If it'll just lean in one direction or the other, that's fine. As long as it's staying up on its own. I think it is. Okay. So, okay, next step would be to actually um, tighten certain areas that are a bit too slack. And then uh, after that, we just put in our side poles and then we're done. Okay, so most of the guide wires are tight-ish, not like bow fiddle tight, but tight enough to where we can start getting our walls Try and go in a in a uh, in a star pattern. So you want to go to the opposite corner when you want to do the next one. Good. That looks nice and tight. Move on to the same back corner, back corner here. It's up. It's up. This is a really good big point. You could just call it good at this point if you're really tired. You want to finish it up and fine tune it tomorrow. That's fine. Uh, the next step is to get those sags. You see those sags right there. Uh, we got to get those out. So you remember those lines that we, we uh, um, put up along that seam? Well, we need to tighten those down. You know, those little guide wires like right, right here and on the opposite side. And that'll pull it tight. And uh, right now there's just not enough tension on that part of it to do that. So that's what we got to do now is just tighten those guide wires. See, that looks pretty good to me. What do you think? Yeah. All right, I can't go any further. All right. Tighten out all that and try and get those seams as straight as possible. Now, if you had a pole, you know, for each of these areas, that would be nice and straight, but you really don't need that and it's just more work. And the only real difference is that it's aesthetically more pleasing, I guess. But, uh, you know, if you're just setting this up by yourself, and I mean, it's a lot of work, and you're really not going to care. In the middle of the night, you're tired. You don't care how straight that is. As long as it keeps you dry and it keeps you warm, what does it really matter? And that little sag, um, believe it or not, will let rain slide off. And that's what you want. You want that rain to come down and not cool up on the top of your tent and potentially leak through. Now that we've... Uh, 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 I can't talk. I don't know how to do that anymore. It up. Uh, now that we've tightened it up, uh, we just got to get the awning up and it's a really really nice long awning for lots of room to just chill out in front of during like rain and, and whatnot so we just need to uh, draw a line uh, from this point here to the um, other point on the front there and we just want to draw that line and go two feet from there you know well more like three maybe four feet and uh, drive another stake in and then pull the tension hot and then uh, we'll adjust it from there because ultimately we don't want this super tight and creating a you know a pocket in the middle where the rain can collect and drip through. So here we go. Hey Ken folks, so that's basically it in a nutshell. It's a very simple process. It's a bit tedious, but it, you know, it's it's not as complicated as you guys think it is and it's not nearly as expensive as it is The canvas is probably going to be the biggest expense out of all of this and again Midwest tents has a great price on tents and that they're, they're very high quality I think they're they're very um, They're a lot more gooder than most most tent manufacturers um, 
they're not the best, but I think they're they're still up there. They're still a really high quality tent maker. And that's what I was going for. Like I didn't have a ton of money to spend. It was definitely one of the more expensive things I've got, but like just feeling like the heft of it and the quality, I'm gonna take this to so many events. Um, and my other thing was I was pretty intimidated about the setup. I was really worried I would need like five people to do it, but we knocked it out with just the two of us mm -hmm. under an hour to set it up the first time, kind of figuring out how it would all go. Um, so it was it was awesome. I'm right. really excited about it. And the more you know, the less people you need and the less stuff you need to do anything really. And I'm hoping this kind of clarified quite a lot of stuff and uh, just kind of removed some of the mystery and apprehension, any kind of anxiety you guys might have had about all of this. And uh, yeah, uh, just if you guys liked it, if you thought it was helpful, if there's still some things that are unclear, or if you just want to yell at me, just leave a comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are. I'll talk with you. and. You know, the more we talk back and forth, the more we can grow and make this hobby better for ourselves and for others. And that's all I got for you today, nerds. I'm going to send you home with a be humble, be helpful, and be honorable. Thanks for watching.